Hello, this is my first video for uh, my YouTube channel and it's based upon people that are interested in living or retiring here to Thailand. Um, a little bit of history about myself, I've been retired here now for just over five years but I've been associated for Tha with Thailand <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> for many years now. Um, I worked out here in the 90s, I fell in love with the country. Um, in the 1998 the Thai economy collapsed and I ended up going back and working in Europe, working in the oil industry, going to places like Africa, uh, and project engineering on oil rigs etc. right up to my, my retirement. <clears throat> okay, so that's me. Um, I now live in Pattaya, which is a uh, holiday resort, seaside town in central Thailand. It's uh, quite infamous in its history for being a bit of a, a boys town with all the, the pleasures that men and boys seek when they go on holiday. But in, in recent years it's kind of changed. <clears throat> it's became a, a, a more of a family resort and um, still has a lot of the seedier sides and etc but there's a lot more uh, things for the, the family to come and see and enjoy the beauty of Thailand and the, the food and the culture and the weather so now it's a place for everybody well it was a place for everybody until of course COVID-19 came and that came uh, the same as it did everywhere <coughs> It, was a, it wasn't really expected in Thailand, although Thailand was the first country outside of China to get, uh, to get a, a COVID um, patient. Uh, <coughs> it reacted a, a little bit slowly, I think, and I know of at least two people, uh, Europeans, one an Englishman, who uh, died with... Uh, COVID symptoms and was never really tested and was never reported as a COVID death, but I think that's not, not unique to Thailand. Now Thailand's got it very well under control. I think there's been about 80, 80 deaths here and um, the, the, the country has isolated itself from the rest of the world. The, anybody coming in, they've got to go through quarantine. Um, Thai, Thai people can come in and go through government-provided government quarantine, whereas uh, people like myself or other foreigners come in for quarantine, they have to pay for it, they, they're put up in special hotels in Bangkok and they have to pay for their two week quarantine which costs about uh, about a thousand pounds UK for that two week quarantine. So um, now we, we've not had any uh, internal COVID-19 cases reported for uh, quite a few days, nearly 60 days I think, but we still get them and in, in the, the people that are in quarantine. Um, I did hear a, an interesting uh, article, I saw it on TV actually, it was uh, done by an Australian research group that they, found, they were looking into this COVID-19 virus and they found that it, it, it particularly doesn't like uh, hot, humid climates. Well, fortunately that's exactly what we have here in Thailand. It's hot, it's hot and humid nearly all the time. Um, maybe that's helping keep the virus out of here. But it, it can come back. There's no two ways about it. We live in a, a, an area now where we, we go everywhere. You check going in and out of stores, restaurants, bars, cafes. You check to you get your temperature check. You've got to log in, log out. Um, a mask culture is definitely in place here. Everybody wears masks when they're out, but people have worn masks here for a long time, and not only because of because of um, viruses, etc. They've worn them because um, of the the pollution in the air from vehicles and. Uh, motorbikes, trucks, etc. And you go up to Bangkok, driving towards Bangkok from 50 miles away, you can see a big plume of, um, of, of horrible 
cloud above the city, and a lot of a lot of that's gone thanks to COVID because uh, Paddy has been a uh, Bangkok has been a ghost town for uh, many many weeks, and even now that it's opening, things have never come back to normal. Restaurants are still closed, bars are still closed, many hotels are closed. They don't want to open. There's nobody coming to stay in Thailand, so. There's no revenues to be made, um, and that people are not willing to open and start paying staff, etc., to um, to get no return. So it's understandable that uh, these places are remaining closed. Now here, even cities like New York are still very quiet and not getting back to normal after supposedly beating the virus. So I don't know what the answer to the COVID thing is, but it's here. And looking at that as an aspect for retirement or living here, um, getting here to do it, to, to live or retire here at the moment is very, very difficult, impossible actually. Um, they're very restrictive to who they're allowing back into the country at the moment, essential personnel, Thai people obviously, but they've got to get, everybody's got to get approval to travel before they actually arrive in Bangkok. Um, there's people like myself now being allowed back in if we, we go out the country, if we've got uh, residence permits, we've got families here, so they, they did ban them for a few weeks, but now they're, they're letting them back in, but going through the quarantine aspect. So looking at retirement and living here, I'm afraid that's a, it's maybe something you want to plan to do in the future, but just now it's a, it's a, it's not very practical, put it that way. But I'll still go through the various elements of the um, what's required to, to to come and live or retire here. And obviously, the first thing you need is a, a visa. Now, visas come in many forms. Um, the normal people, no, the normal visa that people get coming here is the one they get at the airport, which is a 30-day uh, visa, which can be extended, I think, by another 30 days or something like that. Um, it's, it's free. Um, maybe the extension, I think the extension costs money, but the initial visa is certainly free, and that's the most common one. But if you're looking at coming here to um, retire or to live here, then you need, a, you need to go down a different path altogether. And the first step to that is to go to the local Thai consular in your country. In the UK, I think there's two, there's one in London and there's one in Hull. Uh, you can apply there for what we call a non-immigrant uh, o visa, <coughs> which is a 90-day visa, which is the first step in getting a, a, a get, getting advancement towards retirement or or <coughs> permission to live here in Thailand. One thing on the that does cost money. You've got to make the application form. I don't know what the cost is now, but I'm sure you can find that on the internet if you look. But it, it does cost money. And my advice would be, when I got my, when I used to get non-immigrant O visas, I used to get multiple entry ones, which cost a bit more, but um, made life here a lot simpler. Now, if you're going to live here, you do definitely do want a multi uh, non-immigrant O visa, multi entry. And basically, what happens is every 90 days, you've got to go out of the country or down to one of the, the borders here, uh, um, Cambodia or, or um, up to Laos, etc., and get and go out the country and then come back in and get a stamp for another 90 days. So th th that's the first step. And really, uh, if you're living here and you're under 55, that's your only option. Once you're over 55, then your options open up a bit. Um, I'm currently in here. I started on a retirement visa, but now I've got a marriage visa. And there's basic differences between the two, which I'll tell you about in a moment. But the majority of people I know are on a retirement visa. Now, to get a retirement visa, you first got to be here on a non-immigrant O visa. And also, you need to deposit, at this moment of time, 800,000 bats into a Thai bank account um, and you've got to maintain that balance actually you can use it you can use some of the money in and out in fact they like to see that 
But about three or four months before your vi your visa needs renewing, you need to make sure that you do not drop under the 800,000 mark specified. Now, we used to be able to get letters from our embassies here saying that we, we've got pensions, etc., that exceed these financial requirements. But now all the embassies no, no longer issue these letters. And I did hear that the they are now accepting um, proof of income or by way of that instead of putting the 800,000 bats in the bank, then you can deposit uh, every month the equivalent of 70 odd thousand bats into the bank account uh, every, and they can see that it's a monthly income coming in and you get a letter from the bank to say that that's coming in and they find that that's acceptable as well. However, you, you hear various rumours and the various immigration offices have slight differences in how they interpret the rules. So personally, I've always maintained the uh, financial requirement in the bank so that I know I'm not going to have a particular problem when it comes to renewing my visa. Um, on the visa renewal, if you do hit problems, there are companies here in in Thailand, in the various big big cities, that do know how to negotiate around the regulations and get it done for you for whatever you need doing, whether it's more money in the bank or you, whatever the problem's been, it, it can be negotiated around. But there's a financial penalty to it, of course, and uh, better that you, you you avoid these these support agencies. Um, they cost money, so by keeping the money in the bank, etc. That's the main way. When you get here with your non-immigrant O visa you, you, and you're over 55, then you start the ball rolling uh, to get your retirement visa. Uh, th there is d various forms, etc., to uh, fill in and uh, put into the immigration department. It takes time to process them all. Um, so the, I, I believe the quicker you get started, the better it is for you. But it's also convenient if you've got a multi-entry visa, so if things do go slightly uh, slightly wrong, then you've got time to put them right before your visas expire. So that's the visa side, side of things, which is um, obviously important. Now, talking about money again, um, as I say, you need to have so much in the bank uh, here, and you, need to, and you need to be able to support yourself obviously as well. Just now the exchange rate, uh, the UK exchange rate is just over 40 bats to the pound. Um, it's dropped quite quite significantly over the last few years. Uh, the euro is 37, uh, the US dollar is 31, and the Australian dollar is 22. If you're from uh, another area then I'm sure you can look it up on the internet and get what it currently is. Uh, when I worked out here in the 90s, when I first came here, it, it, for several years it stuck at 44 bats to the pound and the American dollar was 25 bats to the pound. And then when the, it, when the, the big crash came in 98, it fell, well, it didn't fall, the Thai bat fell, but the other currencies shot up and I remember I, I had some English currency in my house, uh, I think about three thousand pounds or something like that in, in, in UK money and I thought okay it was going up and going up and I seen it going to 70 do, uh, bats to the pound 80 bats to the pound 90 bats to the pound and then I saw the, the, the one day it got to 99 bats to the pound and I said to my partner then I said listen I said tomorrow if that hits 100 bats to the pound, take this £3,000 downtown and get it all changed into Thai bats because it's not going to go any more than that. So we were all ready for that, but the next day the World Bank stock stepped in and it immediately dropped to 70 bats to the pound. So I lost out greed, huh? greed. I should have accepted the 80 or the 90, but hey. A lot of people, they, they, they use that, that moment in time to buy themselves new cars, move houses, do, do all the contracts, etc. at that exchange rate, and they came out quite well. 
but then the, from then on the tie bats built itself back up and it's, um, it's, it's been kind of consistent for a while now. It's the other currencies outside of Thailand, the UK pound with the Brexit thing and Europe and these have all been fluctuating a lot uh, up and down but the, the, the World Bank etc and the, the various um, financial organisations within the countries do tend to try and keep this stable I, I believe. Um, I, I, it's been quite happy, I'm quite happy to say that um, when the COVID thing started, the pound had actually dropped to, I think it was around, just on the 37 mark, which is a, which is a big difference, you know. Um, I could work it out percentage-wise, but it's significant anyway when you're changing maybe a thousand pounds a month or something like that. Um, it dropped to 37, and now, just in the last...